Welcome to Heart of Mathematics. This video will discuss the Sierpinski triangle in particular. So with the Sierpinski triangle, we start out with a full triangle. And then what we do is we divide our triangle up by taking our side lengths and dividing it in half. So if we let the side length, the total side length here, be equal to unit side length of one, then each sub side length here is equal to one half. And this is an equilateral triangle, so we remove the middle equilateral triangle, and so we can shade that out in black. So this is the first iteration. So if this is our zero triangle, like our starting triangle, then our first triangle, n equals one, is the next, is the first iteration of our Sierpinski triangle. So every time we have our starter piece, which is our n equals zero triangle, we want to make it look like our n equals one triangle. So we see that we've got, here highlighted in red, we've got three n equals zero triangles inside of our n equals one triangle. And I've highlighted these three n equals zero triangles in our n equals one triangle. So for every one of those n equals zero triangles, let me shade out different colors here, we have our n equals one triangle and we shade out those center pieces. So here in the green, we've illustrated that we're taking out those middle triangles. So we start to see that every time we have that n equals zero triangle, now we see we've got these small n equals zero triangles. Let me actually indicate that in red here. Here's an n equals zero triangle. Here's another n equals zero triangle. Every time we have one of those triangles, we'll take out that little triangle in the middle. So if we let red be the next step that we're taking out, we remove the red piece, the red triangles here. Let me go back to my green pen, color in the green triangles here for n equals two step and then go back to the black pen and color in that original triangle we took out. We had the n equals two, n equals three. So after three iterations, we start to see that we have fewer and fewer triangles, well, we have more little triangles, but the little remaining triangles are getting smaller and smaller. So we're taking out more area of the original big triangle. So if this original area equals one, then we start to see as we remove the area, it seems like that area is getting smaller, but it also seems like we get more edge length. So here this edge length is one half. So we start to see if we looked at the interior edge length, we might start getting more edge length on the inside of the triangle. And this is an interesting thing about the Sierpinski triangle is it turns out that it has, it's an infinitely long interior edge length, but it has zero area that it contains. Let's actually do some proving here. So let's look at the area. So the area here of the initial triangle is one, right? We assume the area is one. And now if we look at the initial triangle, we took out, we divided it into four pieces, and the area here is one minus one fourth, which gives us three fourths, because we took out one fourth of the pieces. In our second iteration, we took one minus one fourth, that was minus the big triangle, minus the three small triangles, and each of those small triangles was one fourth of the smaller triangles, so three fourths, but each of those with three of the one fourths of the one fourth size triangles. Because this one fourth area size was, or this, this triangle here indicated, let me get my blue pen. This triangle here had area one fourth, and we took out a quarter of that one fourth. So let me indicate this. This is the one fourth. This is the area of this triangle. And we took out a quarter of that triangle and we took out three of those. So this equals three fourths minus 
3 fourths times 1 fourth. So this is 3 fourths minus 3 sixteenths. Or we can think of it as 9 six, uh, 12 sixteenths minus 3 sixteenths. So we get 9 sixteenths. So 9 sixteenths is less than 3 fourths. So if we bring this down, we get 12 sixteenths. So we get 12 sixteenths down to 9 sixteenths. And we can keep doing this and we see we get 9 sixteenths was our starting. So this is our area, breaking into this up. So this is 16 sixteenths. We went down to 12 sixteenths, then down to 9 sixteenths. And we can keep going down to 9 sixteenths. So we had, we took three of these. We had three, or excuse me, we had nine red triangles that we removed. And each of those red triangles was one fourth of the area of one fourth of the size of one fourth of the size of the original triangle. And so we start to see that we're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So this is nine sixteenths minus four times four times four. That's 16 times four, which is 64. So we start to see that we get smaller and smaller and smaller. And so if we think about it instead of the area that's left, let's think about it as the area remaining. And so when we think about it, if we have 3 fourths times n, at the nth step, and I'll explain how this goes. So at every step, so at n equals, so at step zero, uh, step zero, three fourths to the n equals one. And that makes sense. With our three fourths to the n, we get one. At step one, we get three fourths of a triangle because we took away one fourth. And so three over four to the one equals three fourths, and this makes sense. At step two, we get three over four squared. So if we look at this and think about it, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then we had four more squares embedded in this little region here. If we were to divide this up into four squares, we have a total of 16 squares. And nine of those, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, are left. So we get nine out of 16 squares remaining, which also works. And step three, three fourths cubed, we see that we get nine sixty fourths, and in fact, this works out. So what we're looking at is as we let this triangle grow larger and larger and larger, three fourths to the n. If we look at the limit, if we take this infinitely long, we're letting the number, the ratio, three fourths, get smaller and smaller and smaller. And so this fraction multiplied to itself n times, this looks like 3 fourths times 3 fourths times 3 fourths all the way up to an <laughs> We have an infinite amount of 3 fourths. This is an infinite amount of times. We see that this actually goes to zero. So our total area after an infinite amount of iterations, we get equals zero. So we have no area left in our triangle. And so what we get is we get a shape where we've eventually taken away all of the area inside the triangle. Now the next question is, is if do we have enough edge length? So let's pause for a moment here.
And now let's look back at this triangle. So when we're looking at edge length, let's look at the side. So if we assume this side has length one, all these three sides have length one, then when we do our triangle, we're cutting our side length in half. So this side length here of this inside triangle that we've taken away has side length one half. So on our interior edge, so our interior side lengths, the sides that we have taken apart for our triangle. For n equals zero, we have no side length because we don't have any triangles on the inside. For our first one, we have three halves. We have three segments of one half. For our second one, we have a segment of three segments of one fourth for each of these triangles. Let me indicate these in blue. So these here are segments of one fourth, and these segments here are segments of one half. So we have three segments of one half plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine segments of one fourth. And similarly, if we look at this triangle, the little tiny triangles that we've taken out here, these have segment length of one over uh, eight because we've taken half of that segment out. And so then our new triangle length here, we have still our triangles of three halves plus our triangle length of nine fourths plus our triangle length. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in every kind of quarter of the triangle. We have three quarters, so we have 27 over eight segments. So we can see that this is starting to add up, but the question is, is does it actually add to a number or does it go off to infinity? So this is where we look at summations. This is where we can look at summations. So what we're looking at is this adding up 3 halves plus 9 fourths plus 27 eighths. This looks a lot like the sum of 3 to the n over 2 to the n, where n goes from 0 to infinity, because we're doing this an infinite time, number of times. And we can check this. 3 over 2 to the 0 power equals 1. 3 over 2 to the 1 power equals 3 halves. 3 over 2 to the two power is equal, this, rather let's look at the sum. So the sum of three over, oops, we forgot the plus zero here. Uh, sorry, this needs to start as n equals one. So let's see here, let's start this again. Let's look at our summation again. So we are starting with n equals one because that's where we start with our divide in our triangle. So we don't care about n equals zero. So let's recall, n equals one is because we start, our triangles start appearing at n equals one, at step one. So three over two to the n. So if n equals one, we have this point. And that makes sense. If n goes from one to two, we get this, and that works. If n goes from 2, 1 to 3, we have n equals 1, n equals 2, and n equals 3. The summation sign says add up n equals 1 plus n equals 2 plus n equals 3. So when we're looking at this, this sum looks like n equals 1 to infinity of 3 halves to the n. This will get bigger and bigger and bigger. This goes off to infinity because this ratio is bigger than one. So in Calc 2, you learn properties of series and sequences, and this is a power rule. So this goes off to infinity. So this has an infinite interior side length. So we have a fract or fractal here who has no area, but an infinite interior side length. And that's pretty cool. So if you have any questions, as always, feel free to let me know.